season. Welcome to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. As tonight, the number three ranked North Carolina Tar Heels welcome the Clemson Tigers into the Smith Center. And the big question on everybody's mind tonight, will Ty Lawson play for North Carolina? And the answer is no. The sophomore point guard is still sidelined from the ankle injury he suffered against Florida State a week ago. And senior Quentin Thomas will step up in his place and start for the second straight game. Hello, everybody. I'm Jen Hildreth. And, of course, the game everybody's talking about this week that Duke, North Carolina, tailed earlier in the week. And really, I think you could say there were three main storylines for North Carolina coming out of that game. One, no Ty Lawson. They're going to have to contend with that again. But two, on a positive note, the big guy, Tyler Hansbro, went off 28 points, 18 boards in that game. Team, he was touching the ball just about every time you looked up, which may have been part of the problem because the other... ...to the line. Some points as you look at the scoring in that game. Danny Green and Wayne Ellington just a combined four of 24. But as Coach Roy Williams said, that is in the past, and boys, we need to move on. I gave him a little saying: "You can uh, life can be understood looking backwards, but it must be lived looking forwards." And that's the way we've got to play. And uh, we didn't play as well as we wanted to against Duke uh, in a lot of different ways, but uh, doesn't make any difference in the Clemson game. Well, North Carolina not alone in having to deal with injuries at the point guard position. Clemson's had some problems there as well. That freshman point guard, DeMontez, did has missed the last two games after having knee surgery. And senior Cliff Hammonds, though, has slid right over from that two-guard position and just played phenomenal and two big wins for the Tigers. Now, DeMontez did will play tonight. We do expect to see him, though Hammonds will still be starting at the point. It should be a great game. The last time these two teams met, it certainly was a fantastic matchup. We're going to take a look back at that one when we come back on ACC Sunday Night Who. Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The North Carolina Tar Heels trying to rebound from that midweek loss to Duke as they take on the Clemson Tigers. And boy, if you said North Carolina Clemson earlier this season, you generally got quite a response because that was one of the most exciting games of the ACC season. We had it right here on ACC Sunday Night News. Clemson Stickman came up big against Tyler Hansbro, holding him to just three field goals in the game, a season low of 12 points. But the one trial they couldn't contain, Wayne Ellington, career high, 36 points, including the game winner. That moment was big, but he knows the game tonight even bigger. They're a good team, you know, and we respect them just as well as we respect all of our opponents. And, uh, you know, they took us down to, the, down to the last second, last game, and we know how talented they are. We know how hard they play. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to treat them just like any other team. We're going to treat them with respect. And when they come in here, we know we have to give it 100% effort and play our hardest in order to get a win. Well, one way or another, history is going to be made tonight. North Carolina has won 52 in a row against Clemson on their home court. They're 52-0. That ties for the longest streak in the nation. Will they take over sole place of number one, or will Clemson put an end to it? We'll have the Tigers and the Tar Heels when we come back on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Welcome to Chapel Hill. I'm Brendan Haywood of the Washington Wizards and the Carolina Tar Heel forever. It's ACC Sunday Night Who brought to you in brilliant high definition. We just came to party down. College basketball history will be made tonight. We just came to party, 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 party. Clemson travels to Chapel Hill to take on the third ranked North Carolina Tar Heels. North Carolina has defeated Clemson a record 52 straight times at home. Last month on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, Clemson took it into overtime before UNC pulled another victory. But in Chapel Hill, 52 times in a row, Clemson has come up short. Can the Tigers break the streak tonight? Or will North Carolina cement its name in the NCAA record books forever? What a night for ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Clemson battles third-ranked North Carolina at home. Now on FSN. It is.
is a hoop party down indeed here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops from the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, number three, North Carolina, entertaining the Clemson Tigers. Now a look at the ACC standings, a must for North Carolina to win, even to maintain contact with Duke, who beat them earlier in the week. And the big story coming into tonight's game, of course, what happened a week ago today. Ty Lawson went down with an ankle strain that cost him an opportunity to play against Duke, and he will not go tonight. So all eyes on Q, because Ty Lawson will be unable to go. Q is Quentin Thomas, the once seldom used guard, now a senior who's actually been playing well, will really be called upon to play at his best tonight. Hello everyone, I am Tim Brando, and even though Clemson has never won here in the history of their program, they come in supremely confident. And Mike Jaminski, who joins me, I think this is a Tar Heel team that must be saying to itself, we cannot have a lingering residue from the game against Duke. Well, and it's such an emotional game, Tim. It really drains you. And uh, you saw yesterday Duke really struggled against oh, BC yeah. early. So North Carolina definitely has to guard against that. And they can't lose a third home game. Clemson coming in with a full head of steam with two big wins over uh, over BC and Virginia. And Tyler Hansbrough, of course, a major factor in the matchup. You know he's got to play big. He was all that they had against the Devils. Well, and you look at it, he has been spectacular over the last two games, and they had to eke out a win down at Florida State and then the loss at Duke, but he's putting up special numbers. Now, to counteract that, Clemson going to go at him with James Mays and Trevor Booker. They held him to seven field goal attempts in the game down in Clemson. Look for a lot of double-teaming big from the Tigers. Clemson's been banged up, too, but they're getting healthy at just the right time for this game. Well, DeMontez Stitt will see some action tonight coming back off of knee surgery and all all those little nicks and pains starting to go away. All right, we've got the lineups and the opening dip coming up as Clemson looks to make history. North Carolina looks to continue it. We'll preview the matchup when we return right after this. We welcome you back to the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Pizza Hut. Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky, Jen Hildreth, happy to have you with us. We've been touching on the uh, history-making event that we have tonight. Something's got to give. Either it will be the longest all-time home winning streak or it will come to an end. And right now, Princeton and Brown, and that series, Mike, was discontinued back in 2002, so it can't get any worse than 52 in that matchup, but it could for Clemson tonight. I, you know, to me, this, this streak has always mystified me. I think it's one of the most improbable in, in all of college sports all time. You thought at some point in time in the history of the conference yeah. that Clemson would have, you know, North Carolina, the whole state would have had the flu or something. Three years ago, they came within two points, lost 68-66. That's as close as they've ever come. They have won a tournament game, one game on North Carolina soil, uh, during the ACC tournament back in 1996. And in truth, when you think about it, the, the uh, stars and the moon could be aligned. What with Ty Lawson out tonight and Clemson playing as well as they have been? Well, it, it's certainly a different North Carolina team without Ty Lawson against Duke the other day. They only got two fast breaks for the entire game. So the speed not really there. And, uh, and it's unfair, frankly, to ask Quentin Thomas to beat Ty Lawson because he's, he's not that type of player. He doesn't have that kind of physical skill. Well, Danny Green uh, signaling the, uh, that the reinforcements are ready to go with his uh, textbook toe tap along the Tar Heel sideline. Officials tonight, Ted Valentine, Bernard Clinton, and Tony Green. And the tip is controlled to Quentin Thomas of North Carolina. Ellington has his pocket pick. Nice work. Rivers out to Mays. Just like that. A slam for Clemson and they take the lead. Like quick hands of James Mays. And we'll see him defensively. He's in front of the press where he is right now and also uh, big in double teams. Again, those quick hands. That time it was Hammonds knocking it away. Clemson out running North Carolina early. Good save by Mays into the hands of Hammonds. Normally, no one would be faster than Carolina in transition, but that's when Lawson is healthy. Sam Perry is in the starting lineup for Clemson. He's one of the often injured Tigers this year, and the rebound pulled down by Thompson for North Carolina. Go, 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 
Booker playing behind Hansborough, being physical in another North Carolina turnover. There's three already. He's really struggling offensively in the half court. That's a blocking foul underneath. As again, Clemson attacking the rack. Rivers fouled by Thompson. Well, if you're Oliver Purnell, this is exactly the way you wanted the game to get started. Uh, great double team right there, quick hands, and then the lead jam by James Mays. A lot of confidence here early for this Clemson Tiger team. We talked about coming into it. This is maybe as confident as they've been all year with a huge road win up in Virginia and a convincing win against Boston College. At home. Now, granted, Virginia's been going south of late, but for them to go on the road, and we talked to Oliver Purnell about that, Mike, earlier today at the shoot-around, you know, you win by 31 in the road in this league, particularly given Clemson's history, that is huge. Right, and, and the team in Clemson who has struggled on the road. So, you know, I don't, I don't care who the opponent is and how they're playing. Booker keeping it alive as the free throw shooting woes for the Tigers continue. North Carolina will have it. And Alex Stevenson will come into the game number 32 for the uh, Tar Heels, replacing Thompson, who got the uh, foul. He was in foul difficulty all game long on Wednesday night against Duke and ultimately fouled out. And yet, well, that Thomas forced into a turnover. Boy, that Clemson pressure. Oliver Purnell's press has been daunting early on. Wow, this is, they got the uh, they got the turnover and a dead ball turnover. And uh, right there, Thomas, you have to look up and know where your defenders are. He just ran right into the double team. Four turnovers, Mike. No shots in the first 90 seconds for North Carolina. Right, and Carolina's fortunate that Clemson has only turned those into two points uh, to this to this point. Hammonds on the wing. Make it five after that three ball. Uh, the cliff hands filling in for DeMontez Stitt, who will see action tonight, has been so steady at the point. Another steal. Hammonds for three. Just like that, two three-pointers, and that lead has been up to eight. And a foul as one time uh, a little too aggressive with Sam Perry, going after Tyler Hansbrough. And it's interesting, Tim, it's early in the game, but in the first two minutes, there has not been a lot of poise by this North Carolina team against the pressure of Clemson. Well, Clinton Thomas's eyes are glazed at this stage. Hammond's really dogging him. What's that old saying in coaching, ragging the ball? That's exactly what Clemson's doing. That ball was deflected out of bounds. Well, and, and to be fair to our listeners, they would have played this way if Ty Lawson was playing. Absolutely. I mean, this is what they do. They, and uh, they, they force North Carolina into 20 turnovers in the game down in Clemson. So this, this is how they play. It's just going to, you know, without Lawson, it's going to take a total team effort of ball handling by North Carolina to overcome it. You're right. And uh, Lawson, by the way, has turnover issues when he's played Clemson. Ellington, again, that one deflected. KC Rivers got a hand on it. Out of bounds, last touch by the Tigers. A break for North Carolina. They'll have it underneath their own hoop. And I, I think, you know, you talk about people who are affected by Ty Lawson. I think Wayne Ellington really feels his loss. And he has gotten so few good looks uh, with, with Lawson out on the floor. He's really had to create his own shot. And he's got a big cover on him right now in KC Rivers. It's tough to, uh, tough to get that shot off. Numbers. North Carolina, when they lose to Duke, they normally come out spitting fire, 40 and 16 in games played after Duke. So far, they've struggled. Hands rolling, traffic rejected. Mays comes over and knocks it into the front row. Well, that was the M.O. in the game down in Clemson. It's the second man in. You get a body on Hansborough, and then either Booker or Mays come flying at him. Great help side defense. Mike, this North Carolina crowd is stunned. Hansborough on his own, finally gets the first basket at the 17-20 mark, so it took two minutes and 40 seconds for North Carolina to scratch. Reach in foul, Ellington will pick it up. They were running the curl that time. Terrence Oglesby will come in for the first time, the freshman from Cleveland, Tennessee, Bradley Central High School. Rivers will trigger it in. Hammonds 
Off the feed from Oglesby. Booker keeping it alive. Out fighting Hansbrough for it. And it's 10-2 Clemson. Timmy, you look at it, and uh, Clemson is an excellent offensive rebounding team. They'll get second shots. By Ellington, every, every opportunity, even from point-blank range, either deflected or really contested, Mike. And that time again, North Carolina fortunate that Clemson was on the inline. They will retain possession. You've got, you've got Mays and Sykes now and Booker up front, Timmy, who are all very good around the rim. Tough to finish inside. They can't get a layup or inbounds the basketball. Mays to Rivers. Unable to convert. Ginyard takes it the other way for North Carolina. And he's fouled. Wave off the putback. We'd like to welcome those of you that saw Washington's upset of UCLA. We're here at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where Clemson is out of the gates with a 10-2 lead. And already they have forced five North Carolina turnovers. Terrence Oglesby committed the foul against Marcus Ginyard, and he's at the free throw line. I don't know if there's an easy game in the Pac-10. So no. I mean, that conference top to bottom is unbelievable. And they're grinders, too. I mean, they, they play in the 50s and the 60s. You see Ellington coming out of the game. And uh, he's been most affected by the loss of Ty Lawson. For those of you just joining us, that ankle sprain from a week ago against Florida State costs Lawson yet another start. He did not play in the Duke game either. Hands throw as a mistake made by Mays, trying to save it underneath the opponent's hoop. That gets the crowd for the first time involved. They have been a berries and cream group in the first few minutes, and Clemson has had a lot to do with that as David Potter, the sophomore from Severn, Maryland, makes the basket. Right, he really got some uh, great playing time early because of injuries and playing with a lot of confidence. Sykes knocked that one away. Seven turnovers committed by Roy Williams' team. We've not gotten to the first TV timeout. It's amazing. Clemson's press has really bothered North Carolina. Oglesby from way downtown. They could use a better shooting effort from him in this game. In the game in Clemson, one of ten, one of eight from the three-point line. Thompson pulls up. Run down by Hammonds. Leaves it for Sykes over Green. Mays and Hansborough fighting for it. And uh, Hansbrough was out of bounds on the end line. Clemson will have it when we come back. The opening moments of the game, emblematic of what we would see up until this point. Grand Larceny leading to a dunk, and Clemson has the early lead. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Pizza Hut. Crunch into a cheesy blast of indescribable flavor with Pizza Hut's new crunchy cheesy crust pizza. Get more, not less, only from Pizza Hut. And brought to you in part by Just For Men. Stay in the game, Just For Men hair color. Clemson with the early lead. Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky, Jen Hildreth, happy to have you here at the Dean Dome in Chapel Hill. And it's been absolutely a team that presses hating being pressed so far. Shock and awe, really, by the Clemson Tigers coming out. Seven turnovers for North Carolina at this point. No assists. We talked about handling this as a team, Tim. Every player on the floor has a turnover for North Carolina. Amazing. Ty Lawson unable to go. And there will be questions this week about his not performing. He did get hurt earlier in the year out in Vegas against BYU, missed the Ohio State game, came back after that against Kentucky, and a quick five-second call as the defense for North Carolina was about to take over, and Oliver Purnell was forced into taking a timeout. So North Carolina's pressure finally uh, gets uh, to Clemson just a bit. We take a look at it, and they've done it in a variety of ways. This is the very first turnover a game. The double team, James Bay is very active, not only at the front of the press, but also in the double team. That time, Thomas unaware of where pressure was coming from. And just some sloppy ball handling. Cliff Hammonds making them pay for those turnovers on the other end. And Tim, you know, there's Clint Thomas taking over for loss. You really have to be careful when you're talking about a player and an injury and his ability to go, because only that guy knows what he's dealing with and what pain he's dealing with. That's true. 
but he did come back after a full game earlier when it was the other ankle. And uh, Roy Williams told me before the Duke game, it was one of those situations where he really wanted to play, but when he said, he said, I'm not sure, and of course when he said, I'm not really sure that I can go, that made Roy's decision quite easy to go right to Quentin Thomas. And ultimately, North Carolina could become a better team down the stretch because of all of this. That's, a, that's the hope, certainly, here in Chapel Hill. Well, Danny Green has also come in for North Carolina. In the short term, what he has to do is tell his team that there's no chance for at least this game that Ty Lawson is going to play. So that everybody has to get in the mindset that it's going to be other people. Thompson gets the rebound. Quentin Thomas gets it up to Danny Green. That ball was deflected again. Hammond's got a hand in there. They have as many deflections and rejections as they have steals. One of the things they talked about is North Carolina trying to generate some easy offense that they, which they so readily done all year long, but in the first six minutes of this game, every single possession has been a struggle. Sykes with a nice bounce pass to Booker. What an entry pass. Ryan Booker coming back from an ankle injury in his own right. Ellington trying to save it. Pass was a bit too strong. And another turnover because of it. Oglesby. Halfway down the cylinder and out. And as you mentioned, he shot in tough luck in the last game. Ginyard had a lot to do with that with his defense. Danny Green with the first layup of the game for North Carolina. Well, and what happened? I think Oglesby really helped North Carolina out. He might have surprised a teammate with that long shot. And they got one of the first break opportunities of the game. Mass substitutions coming after the turnover. DeMontez Stitt coming into the game, along with Sam Perry and James Mays. Hammonds gets a breather for the first time, along with Sox, Sites, and Potter. And you see the number right there against Duke. Only four transition points in that game, which is, I can't even begin to tell you how below their norm yeah. that is. But Duke did a very good job not only getting back, but uh, keeping those break opportunities to a minimum. Green a leaner. Well, Green has given some instant offense. Since coming off the bench, nearly got the steal and committed the foul instead. Let's take a look now at our Pizza Hut starting lineups for tonight's game. Clemson going with its usual. Perry available to go along with Mays. Booker has been hurt but has come back. You see for North Carolina, Quentin Thomas, the only change because of the loss of Ty Lawson. Montez Stitt coming back from that knee surgery just within two weeks. Amazing to think. And there you see the flush yeah, coming yeah. from Trevor Booker. In my era, that could have never happened to me. Coming having knee surgery and come back. It's amazing how far the uh, medical practice has come in that time. But uh, again, the miss. Stitt very active and aggressive going inside. Trevor Booker getting healthier and healthier with that ankle. Green, that's an offensive foul. Lowered the shoulder. An easy call for Ted Valentine to make second foul on Danny Green and that'll bring Marcus Graves in for the first time or Will Graves I beg your pardon so now it's Marcus Ginyard on the floor along with Thompson Ellington Will Graves and Tyler Hansbro the five on the deck for Roy Williams What a find the Montez Stitt was for Oliver Purnell. Look at that. Driving to the hoop, and the youngster out of David W. Butler High School gets the deuce, driving to the basket. They've got three North Carolina natives out on the floor now for Clemson, so a little special extra headed uh, incentive to win this game. Graves can't get it to go. Perry brings it down into the hands of Stitt. Sam Perry, one of those other guys who missed time with knee surgery early in the year. Such a catalyst for them defensively and on the glass. Nice find on the wing. Rivers, he has been lighting it up. KC coming off a 32-point performance against Virginia. Biggest Two. lead. Graves. Perry, that ball deflected again. Booker getting his hand in there that time. Seven steals, five block shots for the Tigers. Eight and a half minutes deep into the first half. Talk about setting a tone in a game. The Clemson Tigers have set it. That's an offensive foul against Rivers. 
Trevor Booker's been all over the place. The sophomore from Whitmire, South Carolina. Rejecting and slamming early on tonight. Clemson leads it by 7, 21 to 9. And uh, the third member of our broadcast team, Jen Hildreth, has more. Jen? Well, Tim, one player that North Carolina definitely does not want to get hot is Casey Rivers after the way he went off against Virginia. In Clemson's last game, a career-high 32 points, including eight from beyond the arc. He's one for one so far in this game. And I talked to KC, who they call Sizzle, by the way, when he goes off like he did against the Cavaliers. And he said for him to get going, he has to get in a rhythm early, find a spot on the floor that he likes. He reads and reacts. He did that so well the last game. Not something the Tar Heels want to see here tonight, Tim. You know, he's not only does Sizzle shoot it well, but he's also got those long arms, and Mike has been responsible for a lot of those deflections and steals that we've seen already in the night, with tonight's game. An excellent rebounder at his position as well. Really helps Clemson up front in that regard. I think that time he got a little too aggressive on the defensive end, picked up the foul. That's his second. Oliver Purnell questioned it a bit, but he'll have to go to the bench now and get Sizzle over to the sideline. Uh, an incredible start right there. Seven steals, five blocks Another already hit. in this game, and four of 12 shooting, one assist for the Tar Heels. You know, so it looks a lot, Mike, because we had that game back in December. Really, the first few moments looked very similar to what we saw in Clemson. The difference being, back then, Clemson perhaps didn't know how good they were. Tonight, they do. Well, I, th I think they've been a confident group. It was just finishing that game against a highly ranked opponent. Potter just inside the arc with a deuce. 23 to 9, the lead up to 14. I think this team came in ready to this year, making, wanting to, and ready to make the NCAA tournament. Now Ellington short arming those uh, runners a bit like he did against Duke the other night. I sensed a lot of stress in that game when Billy Packer and I were here, Mike, and I sensed the same thing going on right now as Quentin Thomas re enters. This is a team now unable to find Tyler Hansbro and uh, a bit glazed over their eyes on the offensive end. Hansbrough finally collects one inside. He's got six. Hammonds off the glass. You really have to keep him away from his left hand. Very strong, not afraid to carry it all the way. Just such an understated, productive player. Hansbrough trying to go reversal. Got hacked and we will get to the free throw line. talking a moment ago about Cliff Hammonds, uh, perhaps one of the most unheralded players in ACC history. Look at that, what he's done in the last couple of games. Well, I posed that question to Oliver Purnell today, and he agreed. And, uh, you know, for all that he's done, all he's been is he's been consistent and steady and healthy and uh, every coach's dream. He shows up every game and he gives you the same exact production. Well, he's only the fifth player in ACC history to record at least 1,200 points. 1,300 points, I beg your pardon. 400 rebounds, 200 assists, and steals. And as we said, he had that great game against Virginia. Let's go over to Jim. Just for more on Cliff, you know, this is a player that everybody on that Clemson team respects. Experience the key thing he feels like he brings. I asked him about having to switch over and play more point when DeMontes was out. He said, playing guard, playing guard. Doesn't matter if you're a one or a two. And he's shown he can do it wherever he is on the floor. I think the fact that he's left-handed also plays very well for Clemson, he and KC Rivers, difficult to guard because of the southpaw offensive approach. You don't normally see that with uh, backcourt scoring mates. Hands roll in traffic. Thompson fouled as uh, Clemson got involved over the back. And the foul does go against David Potter. Take a look at the ACC standings, Mike. This game is crucial for North Carolina to maintain contact with Duke who looks to be getting ever closer to cinching the regular season. Well, the, coup, the key thing with those two losses is they're both at home, and Maryland playing as well as anybody in the conference right now and going into a full head of steam in the Cameron Indoor Stadium on Wednesday. And then uh, this, you know, a Clemson went in, in here tonight would bunch those uh, teams right up together at 6-3. and three. Thompson, baseline extended. Seemed to rush that shot, and he's uh, played well offensively. His problem has been staying out of foul trouble. Deion Thompson's emergence has really helped Roy Williams a great deal this year. Oglesby rejected by Green. And it goes the other way. See, that's a, and, and Danny Green has got the length to bar, bother Oglesby like that. Really jammed him well. It's tough to block a jump shot, but he just played this perfectly. Ellington 
That ball was deflected by Booker. And the follow by Thompson. Clemson by 10. Hammonds. Danny Green the rebound. Outlet to Deion Thompson. He stayed with it. Really bothered by both Hammonds and Oglesby, but he hung tough. Well, I thought he really bailed his teammate out. You don't want to put a big guy in that type of position, but that was a terrific play by Deion Thompson to make the catch and the finish. Here's the look. Danny Green taking a bit of a chance. And why it's, you know, that Thompson really showed a lot of concentration to corral the ball and then get it up to the rim. Well, we talked about Roy Williams about Deion Thompson. We need Dion to become consistent for us and play every single night. Uh, he has gotten better. He's particularly gotten better on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, he's gotten uh, more in tune to what we need him to do on the backboards. We need him to stay out of foul trouble. He was, was doing some nice things in the Duke game, for example, but he spent too much time sitting over with me and eventually fouled out. Uh, so we've got to get him to stay away from that. And at the same time, if there is a problem, then we need Alex to come in and be effective. If Alex Stevenson is who is talking about that. And Tim, the reason why Deion Thompson has such a problem against Duke, he was out on the floor defending people, which he is not used to doing. He picked up all of his fouls trying to guard on the perimeter, but he was very effective in that game, five and six when he was on the floor. Well, after leading by as many as 14, Clemson's lead cut to eight, but just like that, Devontae Stitt running that break to Booker, and a turnover by Thomas. He took steps. That's number 10 committed by North Carolina, and a lot of time remaining here in the first half. Now, Quentin Thomas, he has to do a better job of receiving the basketball under control. It's the second time he's gotten to travel in that situation, and there's just too many bodies and too much pressure for Clemson. Mays and Booker have really run the floor well for this Clemson team. Got a lot of layups and break opportunities. Stitt in traffic, turns it over. Player control foul against the freshman as Ellington came over to deny him the baseline. Get the sense that Stitt's a little over anxious. The first action that he's seen in a while carried it a little bit too far that time. Good defensive stand in by North Carolina. Marcus Ginyard comes back onto the floor, replacing Green. He's really been a vocal leader this past week. After the Duke game in the local papers, Ginyard said, Our effort and execution against Duke was inexcusable. I guess if there's one game you'd think that effort wouldn't be a problem. With, with North Carolina, it would be the Duke game. And frankly, I, I thought that the effort was there. I thought the execution was not. I thought he was being a little tough on his teammates. Potter got the foul, his second, and we're in the bonus. Effort, for me, whenever I've been to a Duke Carolina game, that's not a problem. That's never a problem. I, I thought he might have been a little tough on his teammates when he included the, that E word as opposed to execution. Execution was in question, especially on the offensive end, and Duke had a lot to do with that defensively. I think that uh, he's become such a leader, Mike, that whatever he says, his teammates will buy in. Yeah, as a junior, really, uh, Quinn Thomas, the only senior on the team, and uh, so Ginyard has to fill that role. And he actually has become a, a much more uh, potent offensive factor. Right. 16 points in that game, hit a couple of threes. Uh, aside from Sandsborough, uh, Hansbro, he was the one who was block. No question. Stevenson saves it to Ellington. Oh, a big sequence there to draw Carolina. Two within six. And that's the first open look that Wayne Ellington has had in this game. Maybe that gets him in rhythm. Mays gives it up to Rivers. Bang. Well, Marcus Jr. to mistake there. He turned his back on Casey Rivers to double the post and lost him. He's too good a shooter to let him go. Quentin Thomas almost got away, calming the ball that time, and they delivered a low pass, but a foul spotted inside by Tony Green. Timeout, 7.47 remaining in a nine-point Tiger lead. Clemson up by nine, and they've built this lead on their defense, and they've done it in a variety of different ways. Block shots inside. James Mays coming over the back of Hansworth for that one. Then Trevor Booker on the breakout by Ellington. A couple steals early on the front of the press, leading to a three-point basket by Cliff Hammonds. And then the double team and the jump and the quick hands out front get James Mays 
this dunk, and uh, Timmy, they set the tone early and have carried over and have uh, had a nice little cushion in this game to the eight-minute mark. That got the lead to 14 at one point at Oliver Purnell's club. By the way, he got here a circuitous route, really, from Radford to Old Dominion to Dayton after having been an assistant in the ACC at Maryland. So happy to be where he is and uh, has really put together a solid program. 17-5, and 5-3 five, five and three in the conference coming into tonight's game. Clemson coming out, changing defenses, playing a 2-3 zone, packing it in, wanting to test North Carolina from the perimeter. That was another kicked ball. We had one just prior to the break a moment ago. There was no foul underneath, as I had originally thought. So the kicked ball, and the ball was out of bounds to the heels. Ellington giving it up to Thomas, and Q pumps. Too strong. Out of bounds. Last touch by Booker. North Carolina will control it. Not his forte, Tim. One of eight on the season coming in. Now, you don't think of Quentin Thomas as a three-point threat. He played so well, Mike, when he was forced into duty on Super Bowl Sunday against Florida State, and I thought did not play poorly against Duke. He just didn't get a lot of help. Career high 10 points for him. Uh, contributor. He had, you know, had a number of two, six turnovers in that game. Ellington gets the three ball. He's the key right now because he struggled mightily in that game with Duke. Right, and, they, and with, with Lawson out, a double-figure scorer out, they've got to have Ellington productive. And it's funny, it was off that uh, missed free throw, and he got his first open look, and uh, a lot of times for a shooter, you just need that one little spark. And he carried him with a career game, and that come from behind win. Hooker decides to throw it off the leg of Stevenson, out of bounds to Clemson, 12 to shoot. And Danny Green will check into the game. Uh, Green also struggled, and when Ellington's not hitting from the perimeter, Green off the bench needs to, and uh, it's been well documented. They were a collective 4 of 24 in that game Wednesday night. Rivers, boy, doesn't matter if he's contested or has an open look. He is just money. Well, he played a little bit of cat and mouse in the two-man game that time and uh, got got the green to back off him. Same play. Why not go back to it, huh? Rivers again. The guy with the ball is pretty important. You can't leave him in that situation. Everybody went with the cutter. Yep. Rivers had a great look. Story, you're defending off the ball, but you need to be on it as well. Ellington is open. Hello, he is cranking it up. He's got nine, and he's keeping North Carolina within contact. Well, the last time he saw this color jersey, he had 36, including the game winner down in Little John. He's having a little bit of a flashback. Stitt. For some room, finds it. And uh, nice defensive work by Quentin Thomas that time. Montez Stitt trying to do too much off the dribble in this game. Ellington blows by and pulls up. That was a deuce. 36 to 29. And the sophomore from Pennsylvania has them on their feet here in Chapel Hill. under 10. Again, just a bit of a dribble drive by Stitt is all that's necessary to create the open look for him. Well, remember Clemson the best three-point shooting team in the conference. So it's a huge weapon for them. Hammonds out duels hands grow for the rebound. One of the best rebounding guards you'll find, Cliff Hammonds. <laughs> playing three around two right now. Booker powers it in right over Stevenson. He's about 75% with that ankle, and his offense has been giving him trouble, but now I've seen a little bit better lift in this game, Tim. He's got a better base, seems a little bit more strong. Alley-oop for Hansbrough, and a quick recovery by Rivers out of bounds to North Carolina. Oliver Purnell worked on that defensively today in the 
shoot around big time. Don't allow the oop to Hansbrough. That's, and that was a tough play and uh, coming in a little bit late, but there wasn't much real estate behind Hansbrough to go get the ball. He and his staff, Ron Bradley, Frank Smith, and company really worked on that today. Going over that scouting report. And throw in traffic, loves to create the contact with Booker and does. That's the first foul on Trevor Booker and consecutive home victories, as we mentioned at the top, uh, at stake in tonight's game. The other streak would be Princeton and Brown. That one discontinued back in 2002. UCLA, Washington State at 47 and counting. I think that UCLA USC one may go away sometime soon with that battle going on out of the Pac-10 and Tim Floyd going up against Ben Howland on a regular basis. Uh, it still it boggles my mind that in the history of a conference, one team <laughs> wouldn't have won. <laughs> Graves re-enters the game, replacing Thomas for North Carolina. Clemson a 7 of 11 from beyond the arc. Rivers and Hammonds have been lighting it up. Off the ball, a foul against Booker. A little too much body on Tyler Hansbrough that time. Timeout, 3.49 remaining. KC from downtown with no sunshine band needed. They lead by 10. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, Jen Hildreth. We've touched on it a couple of times, Mike. That matchup back in December. I think up until this time, this was the best game of the regular season in college basketball. And they really bodied up Hansbro. Not really. And they came at him with Booker and Mays. And uh, there's the shot right there. Wayne Ellington just broke their heart. He was special that night. Hansbro with the react. And that was really the only time they led in the whole game and there you see the, the battle right there of uh, the off guards and the wings Casey Rivers 24 points Ellington the career high and yeah uh, he is starting to get on that track here early in this game team and also North Carolina doing a better job taking care of the ball seven turns in the first five minutes they've only had three in the last ten well, since then well, that game was a tone setter for what we see in college basketball uh, early in January in every conference we've seen some amazing games Ray Grant just into the game now for Clemson. The uh, Grant family in the college basketball circles and, of course, uh, NBA fame as well. Talking about those extended uh, win streaks that UCLA had back in the day. They still had some pretty good teams. USC did with Mo Leighton and company. But Tim Floyd got a win at Pauley Pavilion earlier this year. Shot clock under five. Oglesby has got to launch it over Graves. And that's a shot clock violation. And Oglesby has continued continue to struggle against North Carolina. They've done a good job defending him. Tim. They've limited his three-point looks, and they've made him a driver. Mays comes back into the game, replacing Grant. Clinton Thomas. No points, four assists, and three turnovers in the game. Oglesby checking him now. Thompson needs some help. Thomas comes up with it and feeds Ellington. Missed the chippy. Hansborough has it knocked away. Ellington misses from point blank range. Sam Perry collects it for the Tigers. Talk about two improbable shots for Ellington to miss after he'd been on that hot streak. Wow. Hard to believe that Hansborough missed that shot as well. That's what the shot blockers, though, for Clemson get you thinking about things in the paint. Sykes wants it. Mays up high. Gives it up to Oglesby, and again, he's got it with the shot clock under 10. High off the window. Boy, he just is in tough luck against Carolina. That's an over the back against Raymond Sykes, the 6'9 junior from Jacksonville, Florida. And, and he got a shot up, but I don't know that Oglesby is a guy you want with the ball in the hands with the shot clock running down, Tim. And uh, you want to try to get up there and let your offensive rebounders go, but Sykes clearly coming over the back of hands, bro. Now he has had some tough games against these Tar Heels, no doubt. It's a tough 
matchup for him, but he has really been one of the great uh, stories of this uh, resurgent Clemson Tiger team for the most part. Well, when, you know what? There's a thing called scouting report in yeah. film, and as the yeah. as the season goes along, teams figure you out, and you have to improve just to stay where you are. So they teams now know they're going to jam him and not give him any open looks. Well, the ACC will expose your weakness in a heartbeat, especially when you're in round two, and that's where we are past the halfway mark of the college basketball season. Very few secrets out there anymore. Hammonds along with Stitt. On the floor with Perry, Sykes, and Mays for the Clemson Tigers. Was cut by Stitt, and the runner goes. Yeah, much better control pulling up inside. That was a good play out on the perimeter. It's interesting, but Clemson has not been able to get into their pressure. Thomas, nice delivery. Hansbro missed again from point blank range. Well, that was a good feed by Quentin Thomas. He blew by the freshman and then delivered a nice bounce pass to Tyler Hansbrough. Hammonds, too strong. Oh, nice work by Perry. This time a foul will go over the back. Mays got involved on the offensive glass. Don't forget coming up at halftime, ACC Sunday Night Hoops halftime show. The FSN final score with the latest highlights and scores from around the country. Jen Hildreth will have some ACC news and notes, and uh, G-Man and I will recap the first half. That's all coming up on the ACC Sunday Night Halftime Hoop Show. Well, Timmy, you've got the two best offensive rebounding teams in the league, and Clemson at 16.7, Carolina right behind them at 16.5. And for the Tigers, a lot of times the best pass in their offense is a missed shot. Yeah. And they just go after it, and they go after it hard on the offensive glass. And Carolina's done a decent job of just trying to keep people on their backs. Mays uh, picked up the foul over the back, just his first of the game. Perry leaves. Casey Rivers comes back onto the floor for Oliver Purnell. Ginyard back at the strike. Three in the game for Marcus Ginyard. 43-34, just over a minute to play here in the opening half. Shot clock again under 10. Stick in traffic. Well, he can get into those cracks, can he? That is a special freshman player. We should buy him that doctor and give him a raise. That's after two weeks of knee surgery. <laughs> I think his patient is doing very well in this game. Someone find that scope, will you? That's a quality scope. Out of bounds. The ball belongs to the Tigers after another turnover. Their 13th. We are at the Dean Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Tim Brando, Mike Jeminski, Jen Hildreth. ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Already many of you have seen uh, some quality basketball. Washington winning at home against UCLA. What a huge boost to morale for Clemson if they can carry a double-figure lead into the half and get this final shot. That's a bump by Hansbrough. First foul against Tyler Hansbrough with 11 seconds left. Excellent call that time by Ted Allen. It's the Hansbrough clearly moving on that show. You have to be stationary if you want to get out and do that. Never got into the bonus, though, so it was a good one to give. The clock winding down. Stitt finds Potter. He launches. And that's it for the first half. Boy, what a performance by Clemson. Turning over Roy Williams' club without Ty Lawson. In essence, for the third straight game, because they lost it in the first four minutes a week ago against Florida State. And the pressure of Purnell's team has been the, truly the difference. He's standing by with Jen Hildren. Well, you said it, Tim. The pressure has been the difference defensively. Coach, what have you guys done so well there? Well, we have turned them over, but then we started fouling, and we had to get out of the press a little bit. We didn't recognize what defense we're supposed to be in. We're in the 1-3-1 a couple of times, and Mr. Simons gave them easy baskets, free throw blockouts. We're not defending well enough 
obviously we're defending okay, but we're not defending well enough. Offensively, anything else you need to see second half? Not really. We just need to go inside more. We're getting the ball inside on penetration right now. As long as it goes in the paint, I don't care. All right. Thanks, thanks. Coach. Seems to be a trend there, right, Tim? Go inside is what he told us last time against Carolina. Absolutely. Coming up, a lot of highlights. Plenty of uh, Atlantic 10 action today. You'll get all of that, plus Jim Hildreth with ACC News and Notes. All of that coming up on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, presented by Pizza Hut. Welcome to your ACC Sunday Night Hoops halftime show. How about Clemson? On the road, leading North Carolina 45 to 34 over the number three team in the nation. Hey there, I'm Andrew Siciliano with a final score update. UCLA has gone to two straight final fours. The common thread both years, a loss in Seattle to Washington. And that's where the fifth ranked Bruins were Sunday. Huskies, oh, by the way, have lost four straight overall. Second half, they lead by six, under three to go. Justin Detman in the paint, hangs and hits. And then Detman again gets to the rack. He had 20 on the day, and the Huskies lead by nine. Final minute, Huskies up five, trying to put it away, and UW will do that. John Brockman under Kevin Love, 71 to 61. UW and Lorenzo Romar an upset over the Bruins. Let's go to the Big Ten. Indiana, another tough road test, this time on the road at Ohio State in Columbus. D.J. White, Eric Gordon, they were pretty much the offense in the first half. There's White, the jam. Here's Gordon, a long three. They combined for 21 of the first 29 for the Hoosiers. Second half, White, 21-13. Indiana puts it away, finally wins a big one, 59-53 in Columbus. Let's go to Daytona. Pole day for next week's Indy 500, or rather Daytona 500, beg your pardon. Michael Waltrip, Remember last year's DQ, he came in second, defending Cup champ Jimmy Johnson makes a statement. He wins. He is on the pole. Don't forget tonight, tune in. 10.30, your FSN final score presented by DirecTV. Highlights LeBron against Carmelo and also Sean Marion making his debut against the Lakers. Clemson dominated on the road. Third-ranked Tar Heels up by 11 is the 52-game losing streak coming to an end. Tim Brando, Mike Jaminski, more from Chapel Hill. Your ACC Sunday Night Hoops Halftime Show rolls on. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Acura, Acura, Advance, and by Best Buy. Best Buy pledges to make away games feel like home games. That's HD done right. Now, let's join Jim Hill. All right, well, thank you very much, Tim. You know, this game so far, everything you would have expected, very tight, but maybe the score a little surprising with Clemson up 11 over North Carolina. Both of these teams jockeying for position in that upper half of the ACC. There's really a lot going on with the teams up there. You got to look at the Maryland Terrapins right now. They are so hot, having won 10 of their last 12. James Giss had 30 points in the win over NC State on yesterday. Gravis Vasquez, a rebound away from a triple-double. Of course, the hottest team, you got to say Duke, 9-0 in the conference. Everybody else is trying to keep up. Individually, Sean Singletary still keeping up his scoring streak. 44 straight games in double figures. And Virginia Tech, Seth Greenberg's team having a little bit of trouble. And their road doesn't get any easier as they come here to Chapel Hill and then go to Maryland. Although right now, North Carolina struggling a little to defend their home court. We'll look at the first half as they try to come back against Clemson when we return on ACC Sunday Night Who. ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Pizza Hut continues. Tim Brando along with Mike Jaminski in this history of 52 consecutive wins at home for North Carolina. Only four times, Mike, has Clemson had a lead, and by far this is their largest margin ever at the break. And it started right from the jump ball, really applying a lot of defensive pressure on North Carolina. They built up a double-figure lead, and they've kept that throughout. Cliff Hammonds, outstanding right from the start, hitting a couple of big three-point baskets, 11 points for him. Casey Rivers, all of his points coming from downtown. Four of four, perfect behind the arc. He leads the Tigers with 12 points. Of course, your player of the year candidate, Tyler Hansbrough, got things going with this drive. 12 points for him, six of six from the free throw line, doing all of his work in the paint. Wayne Ellington, starting to find his stroke, struggled early, but really came alive for the Tar Heels in the second 10 minutes of that half. 11 points for him. Second half. And the statistical data when we return to Chapel Hill. We just came to party down. We just came to party, 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 party. The 
BCC Sunday Night Hoops is presented by Pizza Hut. Crunch into a cheesy blast of indescribable flavor with Pizza Hut's new crunchy cheesy crust pizza. Get more, not less, only from Pizza Hut. And brought to you in part by New Miller Chill, a refreshing light beer brewed with a hint of lime and salt. A view from the state-of-the-art North Carolina Basketball Museum. I had a chance to... Uh, Get a tour of that before tonight's game. What a magnificent facility that is. We welcome you back. Second half is underway. Clemson in control with an 11-point lead, and Hammonds picks up right where he left off with a lay-in. It's a 13-point Tigers lead. Again, scouting report that time. He's left-handed. You can't let him go on that side of the floor. And another rejection to open on the defensive end. This one by Mays. Thompson's got to take that shot. <laughs> I don't know that he wanted the bank to be open late on Sunday, but he gets it anyway. It's a six. He has six points on the night. Hands roll the rebound. Outlets to Quentin Thomas. And perhaps after a bit of good fortune for Thompson, we'll see if that ignites North Carolina. That's the pick for Ellington. Bit of a gamble that time by Rivers going underneath the screen game. Ellington a pretty good look. If you look at our scoring leaders, Hammonds and Rivers were lights out in the opening half, and Booker got the job done inside. And for North Carolina, hands row and Ellington and little else. Booker knows hands has got no help. It was a quality move. It went crying off the front rim. Interesting to see, Mike, if uh, Hansbrough's willing to come outside and face up in the second half rather than battling inside. What a save by Booker. Wow, a great defensive play on the block. Rivers! Well, that was a marvelous save by Perry that ignited that break rather than Booker. Clemson playing North Carolina basketball here early, getting out of the open floor and running. Hansbrough. Decides to put it on the deck. The runner does not fall. Booker clears it. He got hit in the chops. Trying to shake it off as Hammonds sets up the offense. And that will be a turnover. That one was, uh, I think, caused by the problem with Booker from the very beginning. He got hurt underneath. Here's the look. You get the block. First of all, inside. And then Perry making a nice play back. And that gets KC Rivers out, and as hot as he's been, you don't want to give him easy layups in the open floor. You want to make him work for his points. No, you don't. Perry leaves the game. Potter has come in for him for Clemson. Clinton Thomas leaves it on the baseline. Thompson rejected again by Booker. Like great defensive help. Tough in that situation. You want to be aggressive and attack the rim, but maybe he would have been better served to come underneath and use the rim as an ally. Well, Thompson and Hansbrough, it's very rare that you'd say this, Mike, but they got to be wondering. You deal with Booker and, and obviously Mays, and then all of a sudden here comes Sykes, Potter, and company. So much help on that front line to help this team. There's a look at a nice two-man game inside in the body. Trevor Booker really not backing away from anybody. You see two of the best offensive rebounders in the league. They're going at one another. Ball was deflected a takeaway. Quentin Thomas end to end. Miscommunication on the inbounds pass is the first pass to the fast break. Quentin Thomas getting a little hand from the hometown crowd here. Hammonds bumped by Thomas. Let's take a look at the first half stats and the thing that you'll notice right from the outset, the turnover issue for North Carolina. They doubled up Clemson in that uh, and 13 points area. off those turnovers Absolutely. too. So effective. And if you look at for, for North Carolina, between free throws and second chance points, 23 of their 35 and a half. Hammonds, great ball movement to Potter. The iron on time, pulled down by Ellington. Still no numbers for North Carolina. Ginyard with a rainbow. Excellent recognition that time by Ellington to give it up to Marcus Ginyard. 
And they're on their feet in Chapel Hill. We talked about it, 40% of the year to me, but had two big ones against Duke, so feeling a lot more confident from behind the arc. Rivers. Kenyard had it. I believe he got undercut. He did. Foul will go against Trevor Booker. That's number three. So an important foul against one of the Tigers' bookends. Three minutes and 50 seconds deep, and uh, Raymond Sykes will be called upon to replace Booker. There's a look. Good hustle play down the other end. Saves it to his teammate. Saves a possession. Inside the Stevenson. Timeout, Clemson. His team opens up with a 7-0 run here in the second half. In the midst of that 7-0 run now, we cut that lead to six after Clemson got off to a quick start and led by 13. And you look at our just for men field goal shooting, you got to hang in there. And they've done that, staying in the game just for men with their Tar Heels ability to get some defensive uh, opportunities turning it into easy offensive points. I thought that was a good timeout by Oliver Purnell, and what you need right now from Clemson is poise. They knew that North Carolina was going to come back and take a run at them. Let's see if they can get a good possession right here and regain some confidence. It's at this stage of the game, too, you begin to wonder about the long history of this series. There's a foul. It's going to go against North Carolina. Stevenson picks it up at Sykes by the jersey. First foul on Stevenson. Much to the chagrin of Roy Williams and company. But they have carved into the Tigers' lead that was 11 at halftime. It's now six. Next Sunday night, we'll have for you in Winston-Salem the reigning ACC Rookie of the Week, Jeff Teague, and his Demon Deacons undefeated at home this season. They take on Demarcus Nelson, and number two, Duke, join us again next week, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific for ACC Sunday Night Hoops, presented by Pizza Hut. There you see the numbers on the whirlwind Teague, and I think you would agree, Dino Gaudio has done an incredible job this season. I think they're the, one of the good feel-good stories in college basketball, uh, the, way, the way they've kind of hung in. They play very, very well at home, and they have the fastest backcourt in the league with Ishmith along with Jeff Teague. Rivers works inside to Mays. Hansbro well defended that time. Remember Mays playing with a broken left hand. It's amazing that he's able to shoot as well as he is through the bulk of the season playing with it. Injured it during the warm-up of the first game between these two. Stevenson. Tough shot to shoot that little floater right in front of the rim. That may be one of the toughest shots in basketball. And Roy Williams wants him to be more aggressive. That ball was knocked away and deflected. It belongs to North Carolina. I'm amazed that that ball was going the other way. I felt that ball was deflected, and it should be Clemson basketball. Oliver Purnell agrees. That was a miss. He moves so quickly from time to time. This is a quality officiating crew. But it is a game of possession sometimes. That's a block against Sykes. Just about every pass going deep down the court is, is arguably going to be deflected 50% of the time when these two play. You look at two guys uh, at that time, Sykes uh, picking up a, an unnecessary foul, and this is the thing that buried Clemson early. Oliver Hill talked about it. 
12 personal fouls and North Carolina getting into the penalty early in that half really helped them. Heels have been on this spurt since they trailed by 13 to open this half after the first bucket was made by Clemson. Thomas with hands closed, Green, Ellington, and Stevenson on the floor. Hugh decides to take it into the paint. Pulled down by Sykes. Solid defensive possession that time for Clemson. Not a lot happening for North Carolina. Not a lot of ball movement. Hammonds back doors Green. Textbook. And DeMontez Stitt was able to give him a quality dish. Length of the floor, Ellington stripped. Stitt then lost his dribble to Hansbrough. That's a block. He flopped and he got called for it. Bernard Clinton would have none of it. Second foul on the freshman, DeMontez Stitt. Boy, a couple of stout defensive plays there back to back. How about Stitt getting back oh. and getting the steal and then before this, yeah, it's, you gotta wait till you get hit before you go down. <laughs> he was already well into his lean. I think if he had just played solid defense, he could have gotten up underneath Hansbro. They've got Hansbro away from the basket. Now, to his credit, he's able to put it on the deck and drive and follow. But that's a job well done by the Tigers. If you force Hansbro into that position, Mike, doesn't that mean you've done something defensively? Well, he's playing out on the floor a little bit more, and the thing is, he's just making him work so hard for his points. And the answer from Potter. I'm really impressed with David Potter. Really, uh, because of Sam Perry's injury, got extended minutes early in the year, and that benefited this team. Ellington for three. Hammonds tapped it out, got it into the hands of Potter. If they're gonna, if they're gonna milk this one home, Cliff Hammonds is gonna be the key player. They, they need his experience and poise. You didn't know about Cliff Hammonds before, you should by now. Stiff for three. And uh, he has been well tutored by Cliff Hammonds as DeMontez Stitt. And that's the future. That's, that's the future right there. But the present is Cliff Hammonds. And it's nice to have a safety blanket out there for DeMontez Stitt. We were talking at halftime. I ran into a couple of uh, North Carolina riders, Barry Jacobs included, Mike. And I said, you know, I don't know of a player that's ever been as unheralded in the ACC as Cliff Hammonds. I mean, if you think about it, Vernon Hamilton, Grayson Marshall, all these guys, people knew more about them than they ever did about Cliff Hammonds. Hammonds is just a fantastic talent. Does so many things for this team. Green on the wing. Potter pulls it down. Numbers. Stitt. Now that's just beating Carolina at their own game. Well, that's Rivers running a well-run break that time. Graves has come onto the floor for North Carolina. The smaller lineup out there for Clemson right now, but a lot of firepower and a lot of speed. Green goes reversal. The attack of the glass by Graves leads to an opening for Oglesby. Oglesby deflected again. Should have pulled it out. Didn't have numbers that time. Green, that's a block. Foul will go against the Tigers. DeMontez Stitt picking it up, and that's his third in the open floor. The freshman now has three. Just over eight minutes gone here in Chapel Hill. There you see the Carolina Basketball Museum, brand new, more than 450 artifacts, 40 cases of memorabilia, a six-minute game day theater presentation, and a history of the heritage of Carolina basketball narrated by our colleague uh, Jim Nance of CBS Sports. It's wonderful, Mike. I got a chance to go in there today. Lenny Rosenbluth, by the way, who just had his record for free throws uh, broken by Tyler Hansbro, was uh, in there earlier today. Part of that, uh, he, he knows a little bit about perfection, Tim. Yes, he does. 32-0 and 57 on the national championship team with Frank McGuire. Hammonds giving Clemson its largest lead of the game. They're on a 9-0 run after Carolina got it to within six. Thompson, not there, but he's fouled. Let me tell you something about this. You, you walk in, if you've ever been to Springfield, the College Basketball Hall of Fame or the Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, this particular museum, every bit 
uh, reminding me when I was in there of that particular museum. It is just fantastic. Well, you, you think of the programs that could fill a museum like that, North Carolina, Duke, Kansas, yeah, absolutely. Kentucky, UCLA. And I much, mean, do, you, do you think they have enough yeah. memorabilia to put, put something like that together? And much of what was written to help this museum become a reality, our friend and colleague and the mayor of Chapel Hill, Freddie Kiger, had a lot to do with that, and uh, he was my tour guide this afternoon. Thank you, Freddie. One of the best, along with our uh, longtime statistician here, John Madry. I think we figured it up. John is now uh, Hawaii 5 0 in the Carolina Duke game. He's done stats here 50 times. He's 5 0. <laughs> 60 to 47, our score. Clemson by 13. Stiff with a wraparound pass that Grant was not ready for. Leads to a turnover for Clinton Thomas. Thompson takes it into the lane, rejected by Grant. That's another one of those great big bodies that Purnell can bring. It's almost as if they've got two of everything on the low block. Well, they can bring Dre Grant along slowly, but he really is a presence inside. And a steal off the inbound. Grant looking to set a pick. Mays does, and Rivers uses it. Mays keeps it alive, stays with it wow. for the follow. What an effort by James Mays. Six in the game for him. Ginyard. Oh, that looked to be an offensive, offensive foul. foul. It was. Yes, absolutely. I think Tony Green had a block. Bernard Clinton had a charge. Roy Williams a little upset to Bernard, one out. Here's the run out, but uh, clearly stepping in. Established guarding position, got his hands up, went vertical. That is a very poised defensive play for a freshman. I would agree. Ten and a half minutes remaining. Hansgrove steps in off a lazy pass by Stitt. Count it and a foul. Uh, Hansgrove is so good at that, anticipating the passing lanes and knifing through. And this is one I think if you're DeMontez Stitt, you got to let it go. Either you wrap the guy up and put him at the line or just let it go and get the ball in. Don't make it a three-point play. And that's his fourth foul. He'll have to leave the game. So two errors made that time. A lackadaisical pass followed by a foul on the other end and we send Hansbrough to the line. 17 for him. And another turnover. North Carolina amps up the pressure. It's amazing when you begin making baskets, Mike, you're able to start your pressure a bit more easily. And when North Carolina hits a drought, they run into some difficulty well, from some, a defensive some, standpoint. Some teams that press don't like to be pressed. And, and that time, uh, May is just casual with the inbounds pass. You have to make sure you have an outlet. On the alley-oop inside, Rivers was there for it. Cannot say enough, Mike, about today's scouting report that Clemson went over, particularly off those inbounds plays. They have snuffed out North Carolina many times underneath their own basket. And they talked specifically about that lob to Thompson right there and played it very well. Well, Mays has got to be careful handling the ball with that bad left hand so far from the basket. Hansbrough can pick his pocket. And setting a pick. Hammond's a little stutter step on a blow by right by Thomas. 19 for Hammond. Stood him up with that little hesitation dribble, tough play going right, finishing left. Ellington in traffic. A little counted, had it gone. The block goes against Hammond. There's a the look. We talk about it. He's a left handed player. There's the little hesitation. Quentin Thomas anticipating a move back to the other side. Bam is just continues to play with poise. That foul was against Grant rather than Hammonds. Wellington at the free throw line. First foul against Jerry Grant. And under the 10 minute mark, Tim, a little unease now setting in on the crowd. Yeah. Thinking that uh, they're starting to look at the clock and the score. You mentioned Jerry Grant and the family tree. He is the son of Harvey Grant. Yes, the twin brother of Horace. And similar to his dad and uncle, a raw player from an offensive standpoint. But he has been coached up by the likes of Buck Williams, a man you remember well. And there were two great power forwards I was able to play with him and Charles Barkley. Buck will be in the Hall of Fame someday. Three on two, Grant. Nice pass to Potter. And he gets the 
shooter's touch off the back rim. Showing not only a three-point touch, but the ability to work in size. He's got some good size to him. Mays just daring Hansbro to shoot that shot. There's his normal move, and he does get to the free throw line off of it. Mays picks up the foul, his second. I think more, Tim, they've got to attack him off the dribble. When Hansbro puts the ball on the deck that far out on the rim, they've got to get somebody digging in to give Mays some help. Well, Thursday, FSN College Hoops returns. Another Pac-10 showdown. Ninth rank Stanford and Arizona State. Coverage begins Thursday, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on FSN. Uh, Herb Sendek, only at North Carolina State, and now at Arizona State, and this kid, Harden, have really made an impact in the Pac-10. Yeah, happy for her, but uh, he's found a home out there and has really done a terrific job with that program. Stitt comes back into the game with four fouls to get Casey Rivers a breather. And once again, Clemson foul trouble that uh, in two fouls, North Carolina will be in the double bonus. North Carolina has only been called for three fouls to this point. And another thing to remember as we get into the last 10 minutes of this game with 9-12 remaining, the biggest problem for Oliver Purnell, late in games, shooting free throws. And if North Carolina puts them at the line, and they undoubtedly will at some point have to do that, Clemson will have to convert either the front end of one and ones or two shot opportunities. Stick. Boy, no one blocking the baseline, and DeMonte Stick comes down gingerly on his ankle. Yeah, and, uh, but he is, uh, he is a blur with the basketball. Ellington. I think they're going to have to get Stitt out of there. They're going to quickly press him. Leads to a near turnover. Ellington almost picked it. Uh, Stitt's looking over at the bench. Yeah, I, I, he I don't know if he wants to come they, out. They've got to get him out. Because they, they almost got an easy turnover because of it. He has 13 points. Does DeMontez Stitt. Hammonds, yes, and a foul. Wow. Is he driven? I asked him before the game, has, have you ever been a part of a team that had quite the chemistry of this club? He says, you know, no, I haven't, because we've got such a concentration of younger players to go with veteran guys. It's really made a difference. There's the look, getting to that left hand again, and this is an area where North Carolina has had problems defending off of the dribble, just too easy getting to the rim. And if there's a shortcoming for Hammond, it's at the line where he's 38 percent yeah it's unbelievable and uh, we may see more early fouling from north carolina than you'd normally see thomas high off the window not there pulled down by rivers it's never happened 52 consecutive times in chapel hill north carolina clemson's gotten on a bus and gone home with an l Kenyard fighting for it. Tie ball with the arrow going in this direction. The Clemson Tigers will retain possession. Uh, you know, Oliver Pennell told Jen going off the court about wanting to get inside more, and they've been not, only, not necessarily posting people up and getting into the booker, but certainly trying to do it off the drive. It took a while for Purnell to get the kind of player that he's accustomed to having for the system that he likes to utilize. And boy, has he been able to pull that off in just a few years' time. Well, he's also got some people who put it in the basket. I mean, he, he, he built it on defense, but he's also realized that he's got to score the ball, too. Sykes. Rebound to Danny Green. Much different this North Carolina team without Ty Lawson. He took it into the shot clock to wind it down. Hansbrough. He's hacked. He should be living at the line because they're going to feed and fan him the rest of the way. High anxiety in Chapel Hill. Could Clemson finally end this incredibly long losing streak in Chapel Hill? Stay tuned. We'll have the answer.
Clemson leads by 14 with 7.33 remaining. ACC Sunday Night Hoops rolls on, along with Jen Hilders and Mike Jaminski, Tim Brando. The two guards, Rivers and Hammonds, Mike, have combined for 35, half of the 70 points for the Tigers, and they've really had North Carolina no answer to this point. Now, it's been a nice uh, start to the second half, which they needed to give them some more confidence and carry this over. But, Tim, you look at it, uh, the big disparity at the free throw line, but Clemson has 31 made field goals in this game. North Carolina only 18. I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing that Clemson is off the free throw line at this point yeah. if they continue to convert at 50%. Well, let me let me throw this out. If you're Roy Williams, when do you begin the sort of college version of Hackershack? because they've only gone to the line three times. They have a guard that shoots 38% at the stripe. You got back into the game and sent it into overtime and won largely because of the inability to hit free throws back in December. When do you begin fouling well, if, if you're Well, if it's a 10 minute mark, or if you're, if you're 10 points down, I mean, you're not gonna do it now, obviously. No, no, no. But if you're gonna, you know, at, at the two minute mark, if you're in a 10 point deficit, then I think you have to start thinking about putting people at, at the line like a James Mays. For, um, for the man with the ball right now, Absolutely. put him. Exactly. You know he's going to have the ball. There's a turnover and stolen back by Hammonds. What a nice play, getting it back over into the hands of Sam Perry. Great recovery by Hammonds. Potter for three. Oh, it was uh, incredible. That ball almost went in twice. And they had a new clock, and I think Oliver Pinnell wanted them to get out and set up more. I don't know if Potter felt like it was a recycle on that exchange. Ellington. Down to nine, 6.50 and counting. Six-point swing on that near three on one end. Oliver Purnell wants a timeout. You begin to fight those demons if you're Clemson. You know, the weight of history becomes a factor. Well, you know, and, and I think what you have to do at this point is say it's not 52, it's this night, and we want to win this game because if we beat this team here, then this is going to be a huge part of our resume to get in the NCAA tournament. And to further underscore the kind of history that we're discussing, without Ty Lawson for essentially the third straight game, you think the stars and moon are aligned to end this streak at 52. Yeah, you know, a lot of these kids' parents weren't born when this streak was started, you know, so they're not responsible for it. They're a part of it as part of the program. But I, I think the key thing, again, is, is going back and... You know, we, we, we were so close to beating North Carolina the first time around. Yeah. And we're right there. Let's, let's, now let's remember and let's go finish the deal. Stitt uh, nursing that uh, tender ankle. Two weeks removed from knee surgery. Playing with four fouls. Is out there with Hammonds and Rivers, Mays, and Booker for Clemson. North Carolina counters with Danny Green, Alex Stevenson, Clinton Thomas, Tyler Hansbrough, and Wayne Ellington. Booker wants it. Stood unable to get it to him. Rivers in traffic to Mays. Offensive foul. Danny, Danny Green, Green coming over. Hit hard on his head. He got hammered. Tony Green with a good call, and it goes the other way. Here's the look. A nice little pass inside, and Mays going in, just using his body too hard. Third foul on Mays. Uh, Danny Green really stepping up and taking one for the, the squad right there. Good defensive rotation. There you see the turnovers by half. Tigers uh, with twice as many as the Heels. North Carolina had four turnovers before they even launched a shot in this game. Thomas with a bad pass in traffic. Bailed out by Stevenson. Ellington kept alive and good defensive work by Sykes. The outlet to Hammonds. Big turnaround there, a four-point swing in essence. 72-61. Ellington, yes, and a foul. A seeing eye deuce with a little harm. Well, it looks like North Carolina is learning how to get the ball up the floor quickly without Ty Lawson, and that time really getting it done in transition. Ellington with a lot of strength and a lot of concentration with the finish. Well, give them credit uh, after that four-point swing. 
They continued to push as Roy Williams would want. KC Rivers now picks up his fourth foul. So Stitt and Rivers each playing with four. Attrition to the Clemson backcourt now could become problematic. Booker will come into the game for Sykes. There you see the story. Add Booker into the equation, and you're talking about some significant players, particularly if this game goes into overtime, as it did the first time around. Hammonds left wide open. How can he be that wide open? Well, got his own half-court pressure for North Carolina. They got lost that time. That was a terrific find by James Mays, who is a very good playmaker as a front-line player. 26 now for Hammonds. Green gives it up to Hansbrough. 75-66. Mays exposed his team that time. Defensively, though, he went for the steal and uh, turned into a mini break. Oliver Purnell just trying to will his team through this last five minutes. He's not been able to get the ball to Booker the last few times. He really wanted it. Hammonds this time off the bounce. Look at Mays keep it alive for Booker. That's an understanding of where the shot is coming from and where you are on the weak side. Good anticipation by James Mays. something special isn't he how quick was that blow by on the baseline well, green was locked up with booker inside he couldn't help defensively and once uh, hammonds got by on the first step there was no help ellington just inside the arc for the deuce he has 24 77 68 and now north carolina as we approach the four minute mark can ill afford trading baskets that's what they're doing now that command a little quick trap out front. Yeah, I, I, the early fouling is going to begin, I believe. Hansbro comes out to get it. Far from the basket. Obviously, with only five team fouls, they've got some more to give. And uh, Roy Williams sensing that now. Probably understands that that's uh, maybe going to be his best line of defense. open rivers these guys really know where one another are chemistry we were talking about earlier stip pulls up not there hands draw the rebound they did use a lot of clock there though North Carolina has to do a better job of cleaning up the uh, defensive glass Any second chances for Clemson that results in time spent. Mays into the passing lane, taking it away from Hansbro. And the flush. Talk about the guy who provides the energy defensively for Clemson, James Mays. And he's a little gimpy. I don't know if we got, well, he had a cramp situation in the first game, Tim. Green with the follow. Yeah, he is. Uh, Apparently, uh, Ellington came down gingerly as well, but I think he's going to be okay. May slowly making his way back to the Clemson bench. The lead is nine. This is great anticipation on the post pass. Hansborough a little lazy, and uh, James Mays makes that play. And then it's right after this that he comes down a little uh, a little gimpy. And I don't, again, I don't know if it's a cramp situation. Hansborough coming in underneath him after the play. A lot of that went on, if you recall, in that game back in December that we had because of so much of the uh, effort expended by both of the teams. You see he's taking, he's taking down some fluids big time over there on the uh, Clemson sidelines. Now, Roy Williams and uh, Oliver Purnell are great friends. They've worked together with Team USA Basketball. We asked Roy about uh, his colleague on the other sidelines. First of all, Oliver Purnell is a great uh, person. He has great character. He has great values. He's the kind of person that... Uh, uh, you would want your son to play for. I would like to play for him. Uh, I genuinely consider him a great friend and a person I have a great deal of respect for. Uh, his coaching uh, resume, he's uh, uh, been at a few places, and they've all gotten better and better. And it's never been a quick fix. It's never been take exorbitant chances or anything. 
it's every day do the best you can do and work as hard as you can do and get the kids to work as hard as they can and his teams get better and better each and every year and uh, they're, they've got a big time team at Clemson this year. And he has certainly taken no shortcuts in building a program down at Clemson. That no. you, you, you've seen the, the bricks being laid in layer by layer and, and uh, he feels, this team feels that they're ready to break through and get back to the NCAA tournament. Roy got to know him well when Oliver was an assistant at Maryland and a part of the ACC. Never a Final Four, never a top 10 AP poll finish. Last outright conference title way back in 1939 for Clemson. They've uh, shared the regular season crown from time to time. Never a tournament title in their history. And a steal by Green. Hansbrough. 79-72. You really have to be careful with the basketball along the sideline, and that time Clemson got pinned in. Danny Green made a nice defensive play. The burden brought forth by history. Hansbrough again, right where he wants it. Can you get it off your back, off your shoulders? 52 times in history. Clemson unable to win in Chapel Hill. Offensive foul. Timeout. Hansbrough senses it. And like a great white shark, his eyes light up when he's inside the painted area. Clemson with a five-point lead, but North Carolina making a surge and doing it defensively. Danny Green right there with the steal. Hansborough not giving up on the play, coming out and getting the dunk, and then finishing inside. And, Tim, maybe it's no surprise that the National Player of the Year candidate is figuring prominently in this last run. Look at that. 26 and 8. Jen Hildreth has more. Evidently, we're having some audio difficulties with Jim. 2.02 remaining. Thompson will trigger it in. Three straight Clemson turnovers. This is the closest it's been since 14-9. to nine. That was a long time ago. We're at the Dean Smith Center, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. ACC Sunday Night Hoops. And there's the pressure from Stitt against Thomas. He runs into Hansbrough. Well, he barely got it all across the timeline. Green, another tray. We're down to two. Timeout, North Carolina. My initial reaction to him was, and he was right on line with us, what is Danny Green thinking about taking this shot? But what a big time play and what a big momentum builder for North Carolina. He had a wide open look. I've seen this one before, says Oliver Purnell. Largest lead of the game for Clemson was 15 in this half. And this is a patented Tar Heel run and Clemson Without question. Well, now is I the thought, time, Tim, you talk about this. You don't foul on purpose here, but if you get a guy in the lane, you put him on the line rather than let him get a layup. Well, you can tell the eyes of the Clemson players are telling you, can we do this? Can we? It's not will we. It's can we. Well, until you've got a lot of body work that says, yes, you can, the question always will be, will we? They've controlled tempo throughout this game. In the last couple of minutes, the Heels have made the shots, and there is a silencer by Hammonds. He's got 31. Wow, what a big-time shot from your leader. Green again. And 
I think they're, what, what they're saying is, I don't know, I think, I don't know if Roy Williams wanted to get a timeout right there and they didn't acknowledge it. Wait a minute, Oliver Pennell's like, what's going on over here? Roy's saying, I had a 30, I wanted to take a quick timeout. But if you, if you don't get it, it's simply put, you don't get it. And I think Oliver Pennell said, wait a minute, we should have had the ball in an advantageous situation and now suddenly they're going to get the timeout. I think Oliver's got every reason to be concerned as to why there was a stoppage in play. I just the, the shot making down the stretch here has been extraordinary. Danny Green, a guy who has really struggled and struggled mightily in the game against Duke, has been terrific with two huge shots, and then Cliff Hammond's coming down and answering. Now, with this timeout being given, both teams have one left. And um, they've been told now by Tony Green they could not hear the timeout, but a timeout was seen. Therefore, Ted Valentine and Bernard Clinton are over at the scores table trying to determine how much time should be remaining when the timeout was granted to Roy Williams, which would have been after the shot, obviously, once the bucket went in. We've had some games that have been pretty outstanding here on Sunday nights, haven't we? And we're looking at uh, maybe another overtime You game. think? <laughs> Incredible. And a very important game in the ACC standings. A North Carolina loss means uh, Duke, uh, its extension is, uh, is pretty good with regard to the regular season. The, uh, uh, Another conference loss for the Tar Heels. Yeah, they're still uh, still trying to ascertain uh, at what time I think that timeout should be given. Yeah, it's going to be about 109, 108. So I'll add another second. You were close. 110. Close enough. Yeah. So three seconds will go back on the clock. There's the look. Here's that last shot. I mean, it's been spectacular. We were talking early on, Mike, really at about the six or seven minute mark. I mentioned the possibility of North Carolina sending Clemson to the line. They certainly were aggressive. They got three quick turnovers, turned them into points, and closed this gap all the way down to two. But now suddenly that, that frailty, in the Clemson Arsenal could really come back up again given the fact that this lead is now two. They had a cushion up until now. And of course, Ty Lawson unable to play tonight because of that ankle sprain, reduced to uh, spectator and cheerleader tonight. Rivers looks to trigger it in, gets it to stick. Dangerous pass, but Hammonds gathers it in to Mays. Rejected by Thompson. Back outside the stick. KC Rivers has been quiet down the stretch. Danny Green has closed him down. That's going to be a foul. Still not in the penalty, North Carolina. The next one to put him there. Now, and those that, against Deion Thompson, just his second. And yes, the sixth team foul. And Spit out there as a freshman, uh, a mistake picking his dribble up in the face of a double team, really had nowhere to go with it. Mays triggers it in. Your preference would be to foul Hammonds. Or Mays. Or Mays. They're wisely keeping it out of their hands. Thomas picks up the foul. Well, DeMonta Stitt, obviously, a much better free throw shooter at an 80% clip. There are a lot of Tigers that you can foul. But, I mean, here's your look. Oglesby, 85, not in there. Stitt at 81, and then it drops off. Rivers, your next best option. But this is a freshman on the road yep. in a two-point game to one of the top teams in the country. So uh, you can take that stat and throw it out the window. Let's, let's see what he does. And the North Carolinian comes up empty.
Thomas on a clear out. We're tied at 82. And I tell you what, as a starter, that's the ability he has shown. He has been able to get to the rim when he wants. He's got a size advantage over Spit. Timeout, Tigers. For the first time in this game, we're tied at 82. This is the first time North Carolina has even gotten to this point. <laughs> and history is certainly on their side. I think you got to look at two guys here, Tim. That one, Casey Rivers, is, he's coming off a career high. He's been a little quiet in this second half. But he and Cliff Hammonds have been nails uh, in this game. And also, give yourself enough time as an offensive rebounding team to get a couple of opportunities on the back end as well. Well, the last time these two met, we documented it. Incredible finish in overtime early on. Mays and company controlled tempo. Hans Bro was fantastic, trying to keep his team in it, but was bottled up. And then Ellington with the dagger with four tenths of a second remaining to give the Heels the win in overtime. So impressed with the pollsters after that game, Clemson did not drop from number 19 in the polls. They did lose, though, their next game, an on-conference game with Charlotte, then won in double overtime against Florida State, right at the ship. And though unranked, I think they've been playing as well as any team in this conference short of Maryland, Mike. And uh, this, again, is another one of those games that, from a confidence standpoint, will impact them long after this game is over. Let's see in this last play here. You look at it, 19.4, maybe release them with about 10 seconds. Get your shot at about five which will allow you a couple of opportunities to get on the offensive glass and then not let North Carolina get a rush up the floor. Mays will trigger it in. He's got Hammonds, Rivers, Oglesby, and Booker on the floor. Hammonds, a 38% free throw shooter, operates at the point out of a 1-4 set against Quentin Thomas. Time for the senior to initiate. Gives it up to Rivers. Jump stop. Not there. Hansbro lost it with six tenths of a second remaining. Clemson should control it underneath their own basket. And the collective gasp from the capacity crowd here at the Dean Dome. Enough time for a catch and shoot. And they go to Sam Perry, who plays Oglesby. Attacking the rack, you think, with an alley oop? Approach, what do you think? You've got your bigs out there. Watch, uh, watch, you can't lose track of Sam Perry on the weak side here. Stevenson and Thompson in, they smell a potential attack of the rack and uh, a lob by Hammonds. There it is, recovered by Green. We're going to overtime. so much fun we'll come back for an extra session it'll take five more minutes if the Clemson's to get off the shot tied at 82 as we begin overtime Tim Brando Mike Jaminski Jen Hildreth and we have had some magnificent games this year into overtime included the Clemson game against North Carolina back in December Florida State North Carolina last week the Tar Heels have fared very well in OT well, game one of this series was 81-81, yeah. Tim. At the, so That's right. just a little bit off, but it was, a, it was a great late surge by North Carolina to get them to this point. And now with the foul trouble of Clemson and the home court, you think edge Tar Heels. Yeah, it's played out really, Mike, exactly the way the first game did. The difference being, as I said earlier, perhaps Clemson now knows how good they are, but still ending this drought is something that's most difficult to do the burden of history in sport it's uh, quite a cross to bear
Parker feeds Rivers over Green. Halfway down the cylinder and out. Oh, the iron downright rude to Clemson. Touch shot, and that's what Grant, Danny Green with his length can give you. He forced Rivers to really arc that shot. Hansbrough working over Booker. Oh, flipping it up almost from his hip pocket. First lead of the game for North Carolina. Well, Booker did the right thing. He stayed down on all the pump fakes, but sometimes a great player trumps you with a better shot. And that's what Hansbrough did. And the Tigers were losing confidence during this run. What happens to them now that they're behind for the first time? Play on. Oglesby, Oglesby's been shut down all night. A tough matchup against Ellington. Hammonds from way downtown. Booker comes away with a rebound. In traffic, gets it to fall. Wanted a foul to go with it. Now it's a flop by Hansbrough that time. Good no call and good concentration by Booker. Green grazed the front iron. Pulled down by Hammonds and a quick shot that time by Danny Green. Yeah, I, I think he was testing how hot he was from the end of the game, but in that situation, you want to run a little bit more offense. Booker sets the pick for Oglesby. Good look inside the Mays. No help for Thompson. Mays unable to connect. Booker runs it down. Mays setting a pick. Thompson's going to switch off of it. Jump stop. A tough shot. Booker there again, strong on the glass. Loose ball run down by Clemson. Oglesby finally knocks it down. And how many times do we see on an offensive rebound in a scattered play defensively that a three-point shooter gets an open look? That's his first bucket of the night. He only had one against North Carolina, one of ten shooting in his first matchup. That one at a most opportune time. And that one on Booker. If that's on Booker, that's it. That's five. He's done. So a huge loss because of the ability to get offensive rebounds. But as you know, Mike, they've got a few more bodies on that Purnell sidelines that they can bring in. And Jare Grant is a possibility. He may also decide to go small. Booker leads the game with eight points, but think about all the tap outs and deflections. But here's what he brings right there, that energy, and that uh, that makes that play possible. And Oglesby, despite not seeing a big basket, hoists that three up. And I really thought the other end, Timmy, that play, the, the foul that Booker got, he and, he, and, uh, he and Hansborough were really going at it on both ends of the floor, and I think he, his emotions got away from him a little bit, and he picked up a foul that he shouldn't have. And if you recall, in overtime, he fouled out. In game one, let's go over to Jen Hildreth. Jen? Well, Tim, consider on the other end of the floor, too, Trevor Booker, the guy often being up against Tyler Hansbrough. And I talked to both Trevor and James Mays before the game. They play off of one another so much. One guy bodies up on Hansbrough, the other comes over to help. Now, certainly Clemson has a lot of big bodies to fill in there, but maybe no two quite like Mays and Booker together. Yeah, they've decided to go small, Jen, and bring in Potter, who's very athletic, of course, perhaps... Uh, more of an asset on the offensive end of the floor than, say, for instance, a Jure Grant might be. He's let, more of a defender. And let's see what happens matching up offensively because Deion Thompson is out there to North Carolina, and he's going to have to probably check Potter out on the perimeter. When I put Hansborough out there, either way, there, there might be a little bit of an edge for Clemson offensively. North Carolina now 20 of 24 at the line. Clemson 0 for 4 at the strike. And I think that's kept the Tar Heels in this one. Two minutes left. Tigers by one. Shot clock under 10. That's a block. As we talked, Hansborough is a capable defender out on the perimeter, but Potter able to get a shoulder by him. He is going to be at the free throw line now. 70% at the free throw line is Potter, the sophomore from Maryland. Another player that's uh, flourished really during this period of time when Clemson has been hit with so many injuries.
still looking for their first free throw. 0 for 5 on the night. Thomas leaves it for Danny Green. Too strong. Ellington the long rebound. Hansbro. May stripped him. He goes back again. 88-87. The All-America will not be stopped when he's that close to the 10. Just relentless. He beats everybody off the floor a second and third time. Quentin Thomas in for Ty Lawson. Checking Hammonds. Shot clock at 10 again. Timeout, Oliver Purnell. He did not like what that, he was witnessing. Yeah, that, that possession was going nowhere as Clemson really disorganized and credit North Carolina's pressure defensively on the perimeter. So a set play coming from Oliver Purnell when we return. 52.9 left in this one. And uh, Clemson out of timeouts. North Carolina has two. There you see our game reset. A couple of timeouts remaining for North Carolina as you look at Hansbrough. Great work inside, Mike. The face-up game, the strip staying after it right there. And the second uh, thing now, Timmy, eight seconds on the shot clock for Clemson. Oglesby working against Ellington. Oh, he willed that one in from three. Terrence Oglesby, the freshman from Cleveland, Tennessee. 52 white. Woo. 90 to 88. Sometimes what you don't know can help, correct? <laughs> and he picks up the foul on the other end with a hand check. Ignorance is bliss for a freshman <laughs> and for a shooter. Oh, a little bit of knowledge can be a dangerous thing. Right, this was just a big time play, and he had it in his mind he was going to take this shot. And what a finish. Hey, and Ellington did a nice job of not going for the ball thing. Yeah, no, no problem defensively there. I believe the officials now want to make sure that it was a three ball. Ted Valentine's uh, going over. It will be important now because there are foul shots coming up on the other end after the foul by Oglesby. Yeah, it's definitely a three. I thought it was. Yeah, not even close. Yeah, here's the look. I mean, you see right there, oh, yeah. plenty of time. No question, yes. Yep, plenty of distance. Yeah, you, and you really think that Oglesby would even be close to the line anyway, such as his range. <laughs> yeah, he can shoot it from the end of uh, the state uh, map that we have at midcourt. By the way, for those of you watching on FSN in Arizona, in a moment we will be uh, taking some of you to your next live event, and the remainder of you are going to stay with us, so don't worry. Only those of you in Arizona will be uh, in a situation where your basketball game that you have to see in your area will be coming on. Quentin Thomas, eight assists tonight. When you think about it, uh, he's performed admirably since Ty Lawson went down. Career highs in scoring the last couple of games. I thought... Uh, Look more like North Carolina offensively in the second half no of this question, game. No question. They're tied at 90. Two seconds the differential between the game and the shot clock. on the shot clock. Rivers drives baseline, gives it up, knocked away. One second on the shot clock. It was deflected off the heels. Clemson's basketball. 3.2 left on the game clock. One on the shot clock. Want to order a double? <laughs> <laughs> My flight's not until the morning. <laughs> and I've got to drive home. <laughs> Again, very similar to the end of regulation, a catch and shoot. Well, and you got offensive rebounding, too. That's a shot clock violation. So the Tar Heels will have it. Two ticks remaining. 
And Roy Williams was in a timeout. That was a quick one second. <laughs> Wasn't it? <laughs> Wasn't it? Nothing comes easily in the Atlantic Coast Conference, particularly yep. if you're Clemson winning in Chapel Hill. Here's the lob over. And that was tough because he had to go up with his bad left hand and try to make that play. Yeah. That was going to be virtually impossible for James Mays to catch and put up. Remember those old days when before we had the tenths of a second on the clock and Al McGuire would always tell uh, Dickenberg and Billy Packard would always say, now you never know how long that second is. <laughs> well, that was a quick one. <laughs> What do you anticipate here? What do you anticipate here with only two seconds remaining? What might uh, they be able to pull off? Uh, Why well, maybe a pacer play yeah. from Valpo comes to my mind. There's still plenty of time for a long baseball pass and then a dish back to somebody as a shooter. Remember the old play that uh, Drew Barry hit? Pass to midcourt and then someone following to take the three ball with Ellington and uh, Green out there. Lining up uh, at Miss Court. And Lawson unable to be a part of all of this, but Quentin Thomas has gotten the job done. And you've only got two seconds left. The speed of a Ty Lawson would really come in handy. Where you perhaps miss him the most. Thomas has it. Quick timeout taken. Eight tenths of a second off of the clock. It really helps to have those timeouts. And Dean Smith would be so proud of Roy having more timeouts than the opposing coach because Dean Smith made a career out of that through his uh, Hall of Fame career in Chapel Hill. Well, and you know what, Timmy, with 1.2, now you've almost gotten it to half court, so there's plenty of time if you're North Carolina to set a screen now for somebody and get a decent shot around the three-point line. Isn't it amazing, as well as Hammonds and Rivers played, it was the freshman Oglesby that made the two critical three-point shots that put Clemson in a position for a second overtime. Yeah, just uh, showing a lot of moxie. Really great his coming out party against Mississippi State earlier this year. But that one right there to give uh, Clemson a lead late in this game. Boy, his dad would be so proud. He told me my father taught me everything I know about the shot, the art of the quality rotation that you need. He worked with uh, Mark Price and Kevin Cantwell, a former assistant to Bobby Crimmins at Georgia Tech during the summer to perfect his shooting form. 1.2 to go. Green going long. It's picked off by Hammonds. Double OT on the way here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. And Oliver Purnell very happy with his defensive sequence. We're tied at 90. And we'll have the second overtime right after this. It has been must-see TV for the last couple of months. If you love basketball, ACC on Sunday night has been special. Tim Brando, Mike Kaminsky, Jen Hildreth, we go into our second overtime. Clemson got out to a quick start, led by as many as 15 by 11 at halftime. An incredible run by North Carolina to tie it, get their first lead in the first overtime. And now because of Terrence Oglesby, the freshman, who had no points in regulation, hitting two threes, Clemson manages to will its way into a second OT. And it's rare that we get to see a home-and-home -home series in this package, and both yeah. games as spectacular <laughs> as they've been. Yeah. Overtime game earlier this year down in Clemson with Ellington providing the heroics. And here Clemson just trying to hang on and uh, reverse 52 years of ill fortune up here in the triangle. And I'm going to tell you, Mike, given the how fragile this game of college basketball can be, particularly in the ACC, I think a loss here by Clemson psychologically could do a lot of damage to them. They have played so well up until this point, but getting over this foothill or mountain, if you will, is something that could be very, very uh, difficult for them psychologically where they lose. I, I, I think they hang in there if that happens. I, I think this team is different. Green can't get that one to go. Hammonds has it for Clemson. Mays has been outstanding, logging a lot of minutes, number 49. To Oglesby a runner. That one grazed the front iron. Well, that's what you need to do. Ellington needs to make him a driver and a two-point scorer rather than a three-point shooter. Thomas on the secondary break. Hands throw gets it. 
92 to 90. And he's been shooting that shot more, and he's shown the ability to have free throw line range, good trail jump shot. 34 points for the All-America and Naismith Wooden Award candidate. Well, an alley-oop missed time between Hammonds and Mays. Now, remember, the Tigers have never been down by more than one possession in this game. Oglesby will check out, and Sam Perry will enter for the Tigers. And you, and you saw the turnover chart there. North Carolina with 19. They had seven of those in the first five minutes of the game, so they have taken much better care of the basketball as this game has gone along. Uh, almost a walk that time in the backcourt. Ellington pulls up. Not this time. Hammonds tries to save it. Out of bounds to North Carolina. Those anxious moments when you're bucking history, that's what Clemson faces. And for North Carolina, trying to rid themselves of the lingering residue of losing to the dreaded Devils eight miles down the road on Wednesday night. They're picking up their third home loss of the year. Hansbrough fouled by Mays. Well, because of the action taken down in the low post, the help defense couldn't get there. Hansborough very aggressive going to the rim. Uh, fatigue got the better part of Tyler Hansborough in the Duke game, Mike. Uncharacter uncharacteristically, he was four out of nine at the free throw line against the Blue Devils. 12 Ten of 13 here tonight, uh, though. Tonight, he has been on target. And he has been living at the line as well. Meanwhile, Clemson is yet to make a free throw as a team. Age old problem for the Tigers, even long before Oliver Purnell got to the campus at Clemson. For the first time, down by two possessions as Dad looks on. 94 90. Mays double teamed and hacked. one will go against Thompson. Third foul on Deion Thompson. And Mays, one of the poor free throw shooters on this team at 54%, gets to the free throw line. Good deep post up though. Got good possession inside. And <laughs> there is the disparity. Being outscored by 24 and out attempted by 23. those demons. Those demons that you simply cannot shred. Did get the second one. 94-91. Sykes comes in. Potter leads for the Tigers. That, that made free throw allows Clemson to get into their full court pressure. Oh, it's Stipp nearly came away with a pick. And missing, missing the first and making the second isn't the worst thing in the world. You reverse that, and you get a, you don't get a chance to put any pressure on. And they run two with Quentin Thomas, out of bounds off the Tigers. Danny Green along with Thompson. Wayne Ellington, Quentin Thomas, and Hansdall. The five on the floor for North Carolina. Skip the freshman playing with four, checking Thomas. Thomas came real close to stepping back over half court. A walk by Hansdall. He could not get Quentin Thomas to come back to him quickly enough. By the fact, too, that Danny Green was already in the vicinity. There were too many people in too many hands. So an opportunity now for the Tigers is Potter. Defensive for offensive substitutions being made. Oliver Purnell wants Sykes defensively. Potter offensively. Hammonds, Rivers, and Mays, the other three on the floor for Clemson.
Jones off the ball, trying to get rid of Ellington, but can't. Skipped. Missed badly. Rebound by Danny Green. Outlet to Quentin Thomas. The heels look for the jugular. Thompson has it. Has it ripped away by Stitt. Why, wow, he made up for a play. He's just ill-advised shot down the one end, but Thompson, he brought the ball down, which is a cardinal sin for a big guy, Stitt, right there. Nice drive by Potter. How strong a move was that? David Potter, 94-93. Two minutes remaining in the second overtime. Green all the way to the hoop. Fouled by Stitt. That's five. He's done. You don't want to give an open layup. And here's that last play. Potter squaring up. And that's when you got a big outside. He can't move his feet as well. Thompson getting caught in between. And uh, Clemson, a lot of life still left in that bench. Now they lose DeMonte Stitt on the other end with the foul. The good news is that it won't be a three-point play. But, but, yeah, but also, the too, and they're going to bring Oglesby in for offense, too, yeah. because you get the free throw down this end. Danny, mm -hmm. Danny, Danny Green, though, 85%, very solid at the line. All right, for those of you that may be just joining us, and it's almost a fortnight of basketball here in Chapel Hill. G-Man, uh, first half was all Clemson. And it all started early for Clemson, the defensive pressure turning North Carolina over, and Rivers and Hammonds knocking down three, seven of them the first half, and then in the second half, Danny Green is the guy who brought them down with two late threes, and this drive and layup by Quentin Thomas ties the score to get them into the first overtime. Then it's, then it's Terrence Oglesby stepping up, not in the score there, and we find ourselves with another five minutes of action. And now the lead is two, with one more free throw to come for Danny Green. Well, he may be dancing like he does on the sidelines after the game as well, 96 to 93. No need for a three here, take the best shot. Green is checking Rivers off the ball. Quinton Thomas on Hammonds. Hansbro coming out to pressure Potter. He gets the steal. And the foul is on Potter. Timmy, I don't want to go pro on you, but I remember a play Dave Cowan's Oh, yeah. <laughs> Made against Oscar Robertson yeah. in the playoff series, and that looked exactly like well, it. It's the big guy the big guy getting out and pressuring the basketball and getting to the free throw line. Hey, you can go pro as long as it's old school, <laughs> and that is. And he really does remind you of Cowens. Does hands grow. Sykes will re-enter the game. Potter leaves. Boy, there is... Competitor, and then there's Tyler Hansbrough. He raises the bar. He really does. North Carolina by five. 90 seconds left. Ellington checking Oglesby off the ball. Hammonds in traffic. Throws it up. Sykes tries to get it. Hands grow, walls them off. And we have to be thinking about fouling now. Hammond's going for the steal right in front of us. The effort unending by the senior for the Tigers. So desperately wanting this game. And actually, Timmy, they had the ball in the guy's hands that they wanted to foul, but not uh, they, 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 they Deion Thompson. That man, you don't want to foul. Under a minute left. Shot clock at 15. They're playing straight up. And Ellington makes them pay. Largest lead for North Carolina. Ellington with 26. Rivers for three. That one's deflected. Oh, they missed the deflection. 
They're going to say it's an air ball. I thought that ball was deflected. All Carolina here in the second overtime. There's the trap. They got it to Thompson. Now, that's the man you want to foul, but he gives it up to Ellington. Ellington, Green, and Hansborough all 80% shooters from the free throw line. And once again, the clock and the history book remains intact, it appears, in the Carolinas. What might it take for Clemson to ever win in Chapel Hill? Led by as many as 15, by 11 at halftime, by far the largest lead in the history of this series for Clemson in North Carolina. And uh, the heels warmed up in the last few minutes, and, and Clemson began playing as though they were an underdog and not in control of the game in the last three or four minutes of regulation. Well, and it's, you know, and it's, it's ball handling and pressure, and, and they were the ones who were forcing turnovers early in this game, and then things got turned on its head, and North Carolina's defensive pressure picked up. Roy Williams told uh, Jen Hildreth about uh, his team getting punched in the mouth, and he's going to come out, and how are you going to react to it? And they came out second half defensively, especially in the last 10 minutes, and, and exposed the, the, the ball handling of Clemson and got some points off of it. Rivers just picking himself up. I think he took one in the solar plexus. Ian Green got tied up, and he got a pretty good pop. There you see it. Just an elbow that got him. North Carolina has outscored Clemson 10 to 3 in the second overtime, six of them by Hansbrough. And in the ebb and flow of emotions, a lot of times in overtime games, particularly when you get into a second overtime, a collapse can take place. And, uh, I believe Clemson's had that happen to them here. Well, the season comes at you, Tim. They've got to go down and regroup. They play at home against Georgia Tech on Thursday. Georgia Tech team is playing very well on the road. Hammond's not there. Pulled down by Hansborough. I think you're right, though, Mike. Even in that defeat at home to North Carolina, the pollsters even noticed it because they did not drop from number 19. They did lose another game. But I think psychologically, when you've only got three weeks left, in the regular season, going into the postseason, still so much to play for. Oliver Purnell's job may be more difficult this time, yet I agree with you. They have the personnel to handle it. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you'd hope, I mean, so much has been invested in no shame in, in losing this game. They came out and gave a tremendous effort and to push this team to double overtime at home. I know that Oliver Purnell and his staff, they will not accept this. They will not accept it as a moral victory. We've seen some incredible games this year. Next week, of course, on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, we'll have Duke at Wake Forest. That Demon Deacons team has played so well for Dino Gaudio. A heck of a game midweek in the ACC with Maryland. They get to play Duke again, and uh, boy, the Terps have been tough all year. Oglesby shot deflected. North Carolina, 53 and counting at home against Clemson. Partner in the second half, the heels came out spitting fire. Well, they, they, they certainly got an inspired halftime speech, I'm sure. And, uh, and I felt offensively and, and defensively played more like North Carolina in, in this last half. Maybe they're getting used to Quentin Thomas. You bet. Our thanks to our entire crew, Bob Steinfeld and Lonnie Dale in the truck. For them, Jen Hilder and Mike Jeminski. This is Tim Brando saying so long. North Carolina wins in overtime. You've been watching ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Is there anything better? Presented by Pizza Hut.